Hello everybody, I'm Zach Bradshaw. You're watching Blaze Radio's exclusive coverage of the South by Southwest Film Festival in Austin, Texas this weekend. And today I have the honor of speaking with the one and only Vanessa Berlowitz. She is the writer and executive producer of Queens, one of the featured series that will be featured at the South by Southwest Film Festival this weekend and throughout the week. Queens is a National Geographic docuseries that centers on the natural world's female leaders, spotlighting stories of resilience, sacrifice, friendship, love. National Geographic has partnered with a marketing agency to produce and display a large-scale art installation at the South by, South by Southwest Film Festival, inspired by the docuseries themes of nature and female empowerment. And it'll be this on, on display throughout this weekend and throughout the week. Vanessa, thank you so much for being with us today. I know you're in Austin all weekend. Um, have you had a chance to visit the art installation yet? Yes, I've just come from there. We just had lunch with the artists. And it was absolutely amazing to see an expression of the series done like that. So they'd taken the essence of what we were trying to achieve and then built this beautiful, very cool mural. So really fun to see how, I guess, Queen seems, it seems to have lit a kind of touch paper where people are kind of taking it on themselves and expressing it in their own way um, and owning it, which I, I just love. It's like it's starting a movement, which is cool. That's great. I know the South by Southwest Film Festival is a very big festival for films to get off the ground with. Uh, what do you think a film festival like South by Southwest offers to new films trying to get off the ground and kind of manifest success for themselves? Oh, I think to get, you know, this is a really sought after festival to get your show into because it's obviously such a great platform. It it pulls together so many creative people, um, so many different sectors of the audience. Uh, it's, it's a perfect place to kind of launch your, you know, <laughs> give birth to your baby into um, because it, it feels like lots of people are going to see it and, and um, people who are here are excited to see new stuff. So that's really cool. Now, obviously, the film series focuses on female empowerment in the natural world, but behind the scenes, this is actually an all-female-led group. How did you organize such a strong group of female leaders to help create this film series? Well, it was actually quite a challenge because women conventionally haven't had as many opportunities in this industry. It was all British, white, wealthy, middle-aged men when I came up through it. Um, and I vowed that when I had my own company, I wanted to try and do something to change that. And National Geographic have been amazing partners in that. And we just went, OK, let's find all the top talent. If they haven't got the skills that they need, we'll give it to them. And we partnered with amazing male allies who were just really pleased to pass back some of the opportunities that they'd had to try and get more underrepresented, diverse female voices into our genre. And I'm really proud that we've um, we've actually trained up the first black woman to have ever produced and directed a premium wildlife show, which is remarkable given how long we've been working in Africa. So it does feel like we've really changed the face of the industry. And I look around at our team and there's a whole different set of people with very different backgrounds um, who are kind of spearheading this new way of making wildlife shows. And it's it's fresh. It's it's going to appeal to younger people. It's not like the old, you know, your father's natural history show that you just sat, sat down, had a cup of tea in front of. This is it's fun. It's funny. It's, you know, disruptive. It's a bit it's got cool music. Uh, we've got, you know, amazing female artists that we found globally who have done a soundtrack for it, which you can actually hear on Spotify as well. And an amazing female composer who used to be the lead singer of M83. So it's everything about it, I think, is just kind of um, tearing up the old rule book and saying we don't have to do it like it's always been done. That's incredible. It's such an important thing to focus on during Women's History Month in the month of March. It is very impressive to see how you're we all kind of able to uh, work together and bring together such an important film series. Now, um, the narrator is Angela Bassett. She is a very strong, you know, powerful female voice. Um, she's very well known, very well outspoken. Um, what does someone like her with her status and her ability to, to kind of reach people, what does someone like her bring to this series? Oh my gosh, um, it was the dream to get her to narrate because she is the queen. She has played the queen um, in all the Black Panther shows. But more than that, she's a phenomenal actress. So we knew she would bring all the drama that we wanted. Um, but more than that, she also 
really cares about the ethos of what we're doing. She's all about female empowerment. She loved what we were doing behind the scenes. And I just think she has connected people so deeply into the story that we've got, you know, people who've never watched natural history rooting for different characters and like screaming at the screen going, don't do it, don't do it. But it's a lot of that is they're responding to the, the power and strength of her acting ability. And when she recorded that, I was watching her, she acts so physically and she was just, she is that character. And she's sort of, again, screaming at the screen going, don't do that. Get those guys out of here. They're going to hurt your babies, you know, and she, she just embodied um, our queen so brilliantly. I couldn't have asked for a better narrator. That's incredible. And in an interview, she actually said that she was hesitant to accept the role of narrator until she found out that the cast was led by women. Did you ever kind of know that, that she was deciding to join the group solely because it was a primarily female uh, group of leaders? Yeah, I did know that. I know that she was, she's really rigorous in the parts that she takes. And I think she cares as much about the philosophy of the shows and what we're trying to achieve as, as much as, and also she said, you know, she'd heard the old white male voices that have done these shows before. And it was like, my, she, what would she bring? I remember her saying, what would I bring to this? You've got people like that doing it already. So I think when she realized we were really trying to do something new and to appeal to a younger audience, um, she felt that she had a role. But she was nervous at the premiere when that was amazing. I said to her afterwards, how do you feel? And she was like, oh, do you think it worked? Do you think it worked? I was like, look at everyone's giving a standing ovation. But that's the sign of, I think, a really great artist is when they have that kind of fear. You've got to go in with some fear. That's incredible. Now, this series, it takes place all over the world. I mean, you're in the jungle, on the coast, you're in the plains. How does that kind of experience of traveling over the world and documenting these queens, how does that feel to experience and have these experiences to create the documentary series? <laughs> That's incredible. Now, um, this documentary series, it takes place all over the world. I mean, you're doing shots in the jungle, on the coast, in the plains. Um, how is that experience of kind of traveling the world to create and document these queens? Well, as the executive producer, I don't get to travel as much to the places anymore. Although in my history, I've been doing this for 30 years. So I have been fortunate to film it with every single species in this series. Um, it's, it's an incredible honor. It's an incredible privilege to spend time. It's not for everyone. You know, when I, I look at what someone like Tanya Escobar, who's one of the women we trained up, who's a huge talent, she's five foot one. And she was climbing 100 meters into the canopy to film bonobos. And this is not for the faint hearted. She's up there in giant rainforest trees, swaying in huge rainforest storms with electrical discharge everywhere. She's got killer African bees swarming around her head, you know, and then she's at the end of her day. She has to then come down ropes 100 meters out of the canopy, carrying all her gear. So whilst it's incredible to spend time with these fascinating animals, um, it's also tough and ch I respect how hard our crews work. And, you know, some of the places war broke out when we were in Ethiopia filming the gelato baboons in the walls. So we had to evacuate everyone suddenly. Um, so there's always something exciting happening on Queen shoots, that's for sure. How long was the, uh, the, films, the, the filming process? Okay, so takes four years to make these series, um, 1800 days of filming, uh, thousands of hours. Um, and so for each show, you go back for five or six week shoots. They used to go in blocks and you go from multiple seasons. You go in the wet season, you go in the dry season and you're trying to follow your characters. So it takes a really special, you know, the, the people that do the crew that we work with have got a lot of patience and endurance as well. I'm sure. And again, you're battling a lot of different events. There's a pandemic. There is a global climate change. Um, you mentioned war. Um, how did you personally kind of weather all these different events going on while still trying to, to keep everyone on task and kind of keep calm while creating the series? Um, well, I've been doing it a long time. Um, and actually, you know, I kind of know that nature finds a way. So even though we were struggling, I knew that the animals will keep doing their thing we keep getting the stories yes we'd have to pull out for covid but um actually because we 
part of our ethos was to use in-country talent and train talent we were able to keep working when lots of other crews had to go back because we were training people locally to shoot their own wildlife so i would say that was a way we managed to weather it um and overall that's why we need four years you need a long time to make these shows because also climate change is another thing that's really hit us so we had i think the worst drought in 15 years happened in the middle of our filming. Um, so you've got to be able to go back a number of years in a row because some years just get taken out completely. Incredible to see such endurance in filmmaking. And as you mentioned, this is not your first rodeo. You have created lots of nature-based documentaries uh, like Planet Earth, Natural World, Disney's Elephant. Were you driven by these previous experiences to, to create this docu-series? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I think cause I came up through, I was amazingly lucky to be trained at the BBC, but it was also, you know, a white man's world. Um, and as I became more senior, I realized there were very few women around me and I would occasionally get the chance to work with a female director of photography. And I vowed that one day when I had the opportunity, I would change it up. But also I think, by focusing on really new content, because these stories haven't been filmed or in this way, it was a chance to be a bit more playful and experimental and use music differently and have, you know, needle drop from cool artists and edit in a different style. And I think it does feel a bit like, you know, I mean, someone said to me, it was like watching Succession, you know, some of our storylines. Um, so I think I've had the training of doing these great, pieces with the BBC but it was wonderful to take all that knowledge and experience and go well let's rip up the rule book let's bring on fresh talents yes I've got the experience to kind of help and guide but I wanted that new approach you know everyone in my team is sort of sub 30 um, and it, it just refreshes it all um, so I think yeah I've been waiting for the chance to make a series like this and so, as you mentioned, you worked on the series for over four years, you went through so many different challenges, you had to weather so many different events, and you finally go to the premieres, and you, you go to the premiere in South by Southwest Film Festival in Austin, and you go to one in LA a little bit earlier. Um, what was it like to be there and watch the premiere and be with, there with the cast and really see the, the all your hard work come to fruition? That was mind-blowing to hear that many people laughing at the right moments and crying at the right moments and gasping um so anytime that you get to see those audiences it's really moving because you get very engaged in the process and you you know you kind of ride the ups and the downs and you worry is it going to be good so those first few viewings um like at south southwest and at the premiere are so special because that's the moment when you kind of realize whether the all your hopes and dreams are going to come true will the audience connect to it and i'm delighted to say so far it's going gangbusters so we'll see just going to make sure they all watch on disney Nate, disney plus and hulu <laughs> Well, that is incredible storytelling, and for the viewers out there, if you too want to watch some of the biggest matriarchs and female leaders during Women's History Month, you can watch Vanessa Berlowitz's new series, Queens, on National Geographic and streaming on Disney+, Plus and Hulu. Vanessa, thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it, and have so much fun in Austin. It looks like an absolute party down there. Thank you. I can't wait to get out and hear some music and see some other movies. It'd be cool. <laughs> thank you. Awesome.